And we're live on the pipeline. Welcome Let's back, everyone. We have Pancakes Brown with us today. Welcome. How you doing, sir? I'm doing very well. I'm very tired. I uh, just did some Taylor Swift shows <laughs> in a row with my girlfriend. So uh, it's been some long nights, but um, yeah, I'm recovering. I'm good. How, how are you? I'm fantastic. I'm pumped to be here. Can't say my, my schedule's been as exciting as that, but we can try. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm actually happy to be back to some normalcy. I've been traveling the last few weeks, but um, uh, yeah, thanks for bringing me on. Um, I've known about Monad for a while. I have friends with a lot of the team members, and uh, yeah, so it's cool. Super happy to do it, and excited to excited to be on. Awesome. Well, certainly pumped to have you. I think most people tuning in are are probably aware. Uh, you're really kind of the goat of good vibes on on crypto Twitter and and wholesome vibes at that too. And I think Monad has yes. mirrored a lot of their community centric community centric initiatives on uh, things that you've done in the past and and vibes that you curate on the timeline as well. That's cool to hear. Yeah, it's, it's funny people say that, and it's just funny. I mean. I guess it's true. I, it was like the intention. It's funny. I started off a lot more aggro joking with my account, like being not being mean, but like a, not quite as wholesome, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, I kind of just like accidentally tripped into this like role, I guess. And then it became more of just like me just being myself. So it became really easy. I just dropped this like persona or whatever that I had of pancakes. I kept the PFP obviously just cause it's funny, but like, over the years, it's like just hard to keep up like a persona. So yeah, I just try to stay as genuine and, and honest as possible. And I've just found that that's been kind of a growth hack to to networking in the space. So, um, you know, it's it's weird being called wholesome and this and that and all these things because we're all like degenerates in crypto trying to like make it. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess I mean it, it, I I do consider it like a, a positive thing to like not be f fighting with everybody all the time <laughs> that like most people do. Definitely. Yeah. It's, I was going to say, it's kind of few and far between that, that someone comes along and uh, really has that attitude and, and that approach in a space that's really quite, quite cutthroat. Uh, like I was saying, I'm sure most yeah. people tuning in are familiar with your, your presence on Twitter and, and your work throughout crypto and beyond. Uh, but would you mind giving a quick little intro for any listener that might not be familiar with you already? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was I guess crypto intro wise, I um, found crypto in 2017. While uh, while I was I've been working, I was working in music since I was 18, managing artists, and uh, I stumbled upon Bully and Kobe and uh, like Bitlord and people like that in 2017. Just kind of paid attention to the timeline on my IRL account. Uh, never really got involved in the community, like you know, never really tried to connect with people. I was just watching and like buying things and losing money and, you know, just kind of figuring it out and um, ended up, you know, buying the top and selling the bottom. And I was like, fuck this. Like I'm going, I'm going to Thailand. So I, just, I like started traveling. Um, right. So, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I went to like Thailand for, like first time out of the country. And then from there, I was like, uh, uh, kind of a travel bug got in me and I wanted to just travel. So I eventually left music, um, started traveling um figuring life out with a little bit of money i had for my previous marketing company and um spent it all traveling and then uh 2021 just like jokingly one night made the pancakes bro account um just the the vibe was going to be just being the worst trader possible and like kind of annoying like the big influencers like asking stupid questions and like always but like always being funny like with like people would like 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 talk shit to me and i would just like reply like oh thank you so much or like whatever i just be goofy and like always like like never really buy into the to the the like talking shit thing and uh it just like i guess it was funny to people i don't know um and then uh kobe randomly saw some of my tweets at some, at some point really early um and retweeted me and and like from there it was like you know kind of a consistent growth and uh i I knew what that meant potentially just because of the previous cycle. Like, Oh, like I knew, I know a lot of these people who are following me now, like this is maybe an opportunity because there, there wasn't as much demand for like marketing and BD people in 2017 as there is 
now or there was in 2021 um but i was like i mean i yeah i mean i i'm from music i don't have a resume i dropped out of university first semester like you know i i don't exactly have a track record but i, I know i'm a marketer so i was like maybe if i build this account i can network my way into finding a job and then figure something else out because i had no idea what to do next like with life um because i just wasn't gonna go back to music at the time um so i did that and then it was like two solid years i met um the first like best friend i met was grug um he brought me into grug hub really early which has become like i mean it's probably like the biggest the like, highest alpha group chat on twitter um and I, i'm only in there because of like him like I, I like there's no way i'd get in there if i tried to now like i'm just like grandfathered in like i'm his I'm, he's a very good irl friend and uh i'm just like the dumb one in there uh, it's all like gigabrain so I, th that that group chat really like introduced me to a lot of people um became friends with people just by you know just talking being me whatever i had no, no alpha to give no technical abilities or whatever um and i knew it would be a long game to to find like to find a position because <clears throat> once you start, especially in a bull run, <clears throat> even if you have five, six, seven thousand followers, like you start getting offers for shills and and that kind of thing. And and I kind of just chose not not to do that because I I just I, I intuitively just felt like that's just not going to be the good a good idea for the long game. So I decided to just be super broke for a long time, and then I got really lucky on a parallel pack. Uh, shout out to parallel. I set up three laptops and pulled three 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 threes on one of their pack drops and pulled a prime key and sold it at the Pico top against like everyone's advice. Like everyone was like, no, it's going to go to this. this. I'm like, yeah, well, I have no money in my bank and I'm driving Amazon Flex. So I'm going to sell this key. And uh, so I, I sold it for 50K um, and that gave me just enough money to uh, do a conference circuit for a whole year. Uh, so went to like NFT NYC um met a bunch of people there and then directly from there randomly uh <clears throat> boring protocol uh on solana like one of the guys there just reached out to me and they were like hey we're gonna be in lisbon like you have a free place to stay if you want to come to breakpoint and i was like oh sure so i like just immediately flew to lisbon right after that and that's where i met um that's where i met intern uh I'll, pretty, pretty much a lot of my best friends in the space i met on that trip and um met some other people and then came back went to a bunch more conferences and finally I tweeted, decided to tweet out like a serious tweet for the first time. And it was like, I'm looking for a job. Here's what I'm good at. Blah, blah, blah. I think hentai Avenger retweeted me. Um, and then, uh, Victor from IDEX reached out to me and was like, do you, do you want a job? And we met once at, cons at consensus, I think in Austin, um, had like one interview and that was, that was it. Um, and like I said, I, I was down to like six hundred dollars. Like I was like at nothing when, when when I got that job. So it really saved me. And then I got really really sick. Um, so I was in the hospital for six months. Huge love to IDEX because they like took care of me during that time. They like kept me on payroll. I worked as much as I could, but like they they really really kept me on. And then like you know I, I worked for them for a while after I got got better. Um, and then uh, you know it's, it's like actually kind of painful, like leaving, leaving that company to move on to other things. Um, just because of how, you know, it was a really cool family environment. Um, so there's still some, some, you know, I, I feel bad about that a little bit, but, um, yeah, then moved on to something else. And then, uh, now I'm, now I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, on the timeline in crypto, but I'm working pretty, pretty hard on, on the company I'm at now. And then, uh, you know, also paying attention to other things outside of crypto a little bit um looking back into uh you know advising artists or look, managing musicians again in, in the near future um and uh a little bit of like web to SaaS stuff but like nothing like work work um i'm pretty much just working my ass off at my current job accumulating like one or two things and and just i'm on the grind i've been on the grind for like I'm in Argentina and I've lived in Argentina for a year. So since I've moved here, it's been like monk mode, just, you know, doing what I got to do. So, uh, other than like a couple of conferences, like, like Japan, I think Japan was my last conference. Yeah. Um, and it really just like, it was the most recent one. And it, after three years of conferences, that one like really like broke me, like physically everything, like everything. I was just like so stressed out. I was like, I can't travel anymore. So, 
I came back to Argentina and I was like, that's it. I'm done. I live here now. Applied for residency, all that stuff. Um, so I've been just ducked off and, and just working like 12 plus hours a day ever since. And um, like I said, the, like or like you mentioned earlier, the wholesome vibes thing. I mean, that, that kind of was an accident. It's not like I intended to come out and be like the nice guy in crypto or anything. Like, I, you know, I, I just kind of did what was comfortable. I've never built a platform for myself. So I've always built platforms for other people. Like I, I helped build Daily Loud early on. Um, and, and I worked with a lot of musicians, but this is the first time having a platform for myself. So I, I was a little self, like self-conscious about it. Like I didn't know what to do. So I just naturally, I was just like, I'm just going to be as nice as possible. <laughs> I was like, let's just not like piss anybody off. And then that, that ended up leading to like a lot of, a lot of good outcomes. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I got where I, where I am now. And, um, you know, the plan is just keep working. We're just in a bear market, but it, it's not really, it doesn't really feel like a bear market if you're working every day. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter too much to me. But yeah, I think your story is somewhat of an inspiration for someone who's new to crypto, who might be coming in looking for uh, a job, looking for potentially uh, investments to make. What was it for you that uh, really retained you in crypto? What made you stick around? Um, to be honest, um, you know, for the first few weeks or a couple months, it was like hard to make myself, I was like, just tweet once a day, like you're, you're getting followers, blah, blah, blah. But it was like really hard because I've never, never considered myself cr like creative or funny or anything. I've never found outside of myself until, until this account. So it was very difficult in the beginning to like figure out what to do. Um, and I almost walked away like multiple times, but really it was, it was Grug. Um, so shout out to him, uh, that like, he's just a friend. And, um, so I stayed in the space cause I was in his group chat and I was like, well, even if I'm not like tweeting every day, at least I'm like meeting people. And then, uh, I just kind of got in this flow state of like, not really, like, I don't, I can't, I'm not one of those people that can like schedule out tweets for weeks in advance or anything. I, I just have to like pick up my phone and say whatever just kind of comes out. Like, even in the middle of a tweet, I'm kind of figuring out what I'm writing. And um, I, I found that to, to really work. So eventually, once I got into the flow of being able to do that, I started like reply guy really hard, um, like either being funny or nice or like, like obnoxiously stupid um, on purpose. And um, I guess it was endearing or something to the timeline. And, uh, or, and like, it was kind of like, it's funny. Some people, it, it like annoyed at first. And like, it was like, I'm super corny, which is fair. And it's cringe. Uh, but it's like, eventually I like won them over and like now some of them are my good friends because it was like, they just realized there was just no like way to piss me off. And, um, and yeah, so I, I realized kind of that was like a formula. I was like, okay, so just like keep playing this persona and building your account and you're meeting people that, you know, from last cycle that are, that are respected people that can teach you some things. And like, maybe at the time I was still trying to trade stuff. And like, that's where, where I got my name because I lost so much money on a, pancake swap um and uh i'm not good at at, at coin shit coining and trading at, at, at all it's, i'm ter i'm very very good at uh one thing which is um buying a token and then it going straight down so like that's my that's my one skill in crypto um so, so i was like okay well this isn't working um i really tried for a long time to like do the crypto thing and not have a job and just like make crypto my job and it just wasn't for me. So I was like, all right, you need to like figure out what you're good at and how you can help companies in the space, um, at least for some income. And uh, so from there, that's when I, I you know, started doing the conference circuit, um, meeting a lot of the anonymous accounts that I, you know, I, I, I've become friends with over the years, um, which is really, really, really like plus EV is like knowing these anonymous like to most people, anonymous people in person, because then you, you gain a lot of trust with them. Um, same with companies, like just, just knowing people in person, you, you get a lot more trust and respect than just like hiring a random person from a timeline. Um, so, so yeah, that was kind of how I started. I was reply going like crazy for a long time. I was getting like a hundred followers a day from it. Um, I still wish I, I could like allocate time to do that. Um, but I really can't. Um, and then eventually, um, I was like kind of nervous to send out a serious tweet about asking for a job because I had been playing this persona for so long. 
and I was just overthinking it. Um, but I need, I, I needed a job. So I was just like, whatever. So I just sent out like a tweet pretty, like I've never had a resume. So I dropped that. I don't have no degree or anything. I just all self-taught. And like, so I just tweeted out like, Hey, I need a job. Here's what I'm good at. Retweet it if you want to. And, uh, it got a, a lot of attention. Uh, Hentai Avenger retweeted it. And that's where, um, Victor from IDEX saw me. Um, and we, we talked one to consensus, had an interview and I was, I was hired onto that team and, and they, that, you know, that job, that team, one, one of the best teams in crypto, like truly like in a genuine way, like, like saved my life. And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of how I, I stuck around was just like deciding to, to, to just stick with it as long as I could. Like I said, I, I told you before the interview or for the podcast that, uh, um, shout out to parallel for, um, uh, the prime key that I pulled and uh, sold at the Pico top that gave me just enough money to travel to these conferences and meet people. And then, you know, down to 600 bucks in my bank account when IDEX hired me. And, uh, and then from then it was, it was pretty, pretty easy, you know, pr relatively. Cause you know, I, I guess I did a decent job there and, and I started to get job offers, of course, a lot. Um, so I always knew I had like backup plans and I was like, okay, so I'm like kind of established and, uh, you know, I, I eventually, you know, moved on uh, and, and I'm working somewhere else now. But um, but yeah, that, that's kind of why I stuck around was just like the people I met um, and like the really good people I met, the genuine people I met and met in real life. Um, and then eventually getting that opportunity uh, made me realize like there's there's staying power here. Like and we were entering a bear market too around around the time I was like, I'm getting job offers during a bear market. Like, I'll be fine. Like. I've never worked, I'd never worked for anyone before, before like crypto. Um, I'd always ran my own company. So that was a little bit of a learning curve, um, having a boss and all of that. But, uh, yeah, that's why I stuck around. Um, I just got lucky, like really, really lucky. Uh, C Kobe really what it, also what it was, was Kobe just like finding me early, um, randomly and like retweeting me and following me. And like, I, I have like the utmost respect for him because, uh, you know, just the way he carries himself. I, I, I actually like, no, I don't really model like my tweets or anything after him, obviously, but it's like, I, I, the way he carries himself in the space, um, I respect a whole lot. And, um, you know, his, without even knowing it, like his, just the few times we would interact or re he would retweet me did so much for me that he probably doesn't even realize that it was like, he, like he, he really also changed, helped me you know, change my life. Um, and so, yeah, that's why I stuck around is I got lucky and met the right people and kept good relationships and didn't do like pay chills or anything like that. I turned out a lot of money when I had no money in my bank account, just cause I knew at some point something would happen and I would, I'd figure something out. Um, so yeah. And then I ended up here and, and, and now we're just rolling, you know, we're, we're in a bear market and I don't even really consider it a bear market. I'm having fun. I'm just working and, uh, waiting for, for, uh, for next year. So yeah yeah for sure i mean it's uh it's definitely more fun in a bear market when you have a, a network around you that you've built up and friends like you talk about that you look up to and respect and and work alongside and and can rely on for for help if if you're in need as well and i think that's uh something that's really key about crypto and this journey for all these new applications trying to find product market fit obviously building up that network and that community is, is really important. What's your, uh, what, what's your take on community and crypto and the importance of it? Yeah. Community in the sense of like CT itself, uh, I, I think is wonderful. I love the community aspect of it. Um, you know, I've, I've made, you know, uh, you know, I have like, I feel like the four same real life best friends my entire life, but crypto actually it's, I've actually made really, really close, good friends in, in the, uh, in the space. And, um, you know, I didn't expect that. I, I expected it all to be kind of like PVP and like, you know, kind of like the music industry, which is like, you're kind of friends with everybody, but like, you're also kind of like competing with everybody. And, and, and just the route I took, uh, I never had those vibes really. I, I wasn't ever really felt like I was competing with anyone. And, um, you know, I was watching friends make, millions of dollars through the bull run and I, you know, I wasn't, and I was just like, it's cool. Like, you know, just keep at it. Like, you know, the right people, you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. But like, 
keeping yourself like engaged and in a positive light in in this community, I think is uh, one of the best opportunities in the world, especially if you're, you know, kind kind of a outlier when it comes to like traditional background. Like I said, I don't have a degree. I I did well in music for for the years I worked in it, but it's not exactly like a, a resume. It's a resume thing. Like I've never built a resume. So it was like, it's a really unique community in, in the sense that like you can prove yourself like by being yourself, I guess is the best way to put it. And, uh, and companies will, will hire you off of that. Like they don't really care about anything except what you can deliver. And, and I think, uh, I think that's, that's, all, that's also like, I think slowly will be a society shift as well, but crypto's ahead of the curve on that, where it's like, we don't really care about your credentials or your past. It's like, what can you, what, what are you good at? What can you do? And, and are, are you able to, to pivot and learn quickly and shift? And, uh, and are you, are you a good person? Which is always a huge question in crypto. Like, are you someone we could trust? And, um, I guess people trust me. So that's, uh, that's been the biggest aspect of just keeping this community. And I'm a huge proponent of like, no arguing on the timeline. I mean, I, you know, there's been instances where like, you know, some protocols like owed me money and I was like, kind of in in a joking way, like called them out, but like, I don't, you know, I don't, I have beef with nobody. I I don't think, you know, uh, as far as I know, I don't think anyone hates me. And, uh, and I definitely stay away from arguments. Like if people try and say anything, I I always reply in like, uh, like a silly way. Um, try my best not to ever get tilted or anything. Go on a lot of Twitter spaces now. Um, always have a lot of fun. Twitter spaces have been a huge, huge part of the bear market for me because people are bored. So they're just talking and like, I've built great relationships with both like, you know, the crypto deep CT native people and then the like web three, like, uh, you know, uh, NFT crowd as well, even though I kind of like jokingly shit on them. Uh, they are like, I'm still friends with all of them. And like, I, I'm in their spaces all, you know, almost every night. Um, so yeah, I think if you're able to, to stick around this long, if you're crazy enough to stick around this long and like can handle it, um, and not, and, and like not, not give in to the urge to like do, you know, I don't know, unethical. Like, I never hate on anybody for getting their bag. Like it takes a lot for me to like hate somebody and call them a scammer. Cause like, I understand a lot of people are, it's like need money and like, you never know what someone's going through. So I really don't have too much judgment towards people that like do paid shills and all that. It's just not my thing. And I, in my head, I was like, I think I'll have better opportunities by not doing them. Um, so that's really, it was, it was kind of a selfish choice. You know, I was like, just don't, just don't sell your reputation for, you know, 20 grand. It's just not worth it. And, um, so yeah, that, that's to me, the community aspect is huge. I mean, if people trust you in this space, the opportunities are unlimited. Um, I feel like right now I could, I could have a job for, forever if I wanted it, you know, until, until something happens and it all goes to zero or we all go to jail or something. But, um, yeah, as far as like crypto itself, I feel very comfortable in the community now that, um, now that I've, I've kept up this reputation and like, I've, I've met everybody, pretty much everybody I want to meet in the community. Um, it's funny that you say the word community too, because I also have this like thing that when I get into those like NFT spaces, like where I'm like community, as far as NFTs are concerned, is like just like a marketing term. It's like you guys aren't a community. So it's like community means two different things to me. But CT itself is like a real community of people that like there are people that care about each other. There are bad actors. There are assholes. And it is PVP. And I, I totally respect that. Uh, but at the end of the day, I've met way more genuine, nice, nice people like Kevin and Tombs and a lot of the people at Monad. Like mo- like all the people I know that work at Monad are people that are some of the better people in the space. So um so you know big ups to you guys for for building that team um yeah that, that's pretty much that's pretty much how i view it is just being just being a good person i think and and being empathetic and and not not getting tilted about things not getting mad at, like jealous if people make money or whatever if people like or if you lose on trades or if you get scammed i'm a very big proponent of like whatever happens in crypto is 100 percent your fault even if it was like you know the like ftx happened like what I was, you know, I, I never keep money on centralized exchanges. So I was lucky, but like, I, you know, my heart goes out to everyone that lost money there. But like, I'm, 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 I'm a pretty, like for my own self, responsibility is always on me if I lose any money or do any, cause it's, it's crypto. We don't know what's going on. Um, so you just have to be careful. So just that mindset kept me in the community and kept me, uh, kept my spirits high and kept me engaged. 
And uh, it's been the most important thing, I think, I think for my career, I guess it's weird. This feels like yesterday that this all started. So it's been three years. It feels weird saying career, but yeah, <laughs> that's been the most important thing to me is, is definitely the community. That, that, that answer. Yeah. Almost when you look at certain ecosystems or uh, certain protocols across the board, can you look at a protocol, see high value contributions and high quality content and positive, wholesome vibes amongst the community and therefore infer yeah. that it's a good project? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'll naturally say yes to that because, you know, may, maybe that's not the best judge of, of like or best research tactic or whatever. Um, but I, I have found that obviously um, uh, one of the biggest things, especially when I when it started IDEX, the idea was like, you know, people don't want to follow a brand. They want to follow a personality, um, like an authentic personality. Uh, so the protocols that like you can tell are are just really trying to like sound professional and corporate and like aren't, aren't really leaning into the, the, the fun meme culture of, of crypto and like aren't engaging in the community in like a fun, maybe even edgy, even too edgy of a way. Like I was, you know, when I was at IDEX, I was like on the IDEX account, like commenting under coin fashion, some like wild shit, like just like, just always getting top comment though. But like, it, but people in crypto, like they like that humor, they get it. And, uh, and it's also like, I was never saying anything hateful or mean, but it was just like pe people respect companies. I think that understand the audience of crypto. Um, I, I think crypto is really, really put off by tourists or like corporate ish, you know, protocols and ex with the exception of like really big companies that like have to act extremely, extremely professional, like Coinbase. Like I understand that. But when it comes to like new companies popping up or new protocols, it, it's such an important thing to me to see that like they understand the culture. And um, that's why like a, a few advising roles I've had has been, it's been as simple as like, hey guys, just don't act like a company really, it's, which is weird as that sounds like, I mean, yeah, like, you know, share your updates and do this, but like you need to have someone on your Twitter who's a human being who who already is good at Twitter and and can just really just be a person behind your 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 logo. And, um, and, you know, I've, I've seen that, you know, w with Monad, I've seen that with a, a few protocols, um, since, you know, since I started working, working in the space and that's, I naturally more drawn to pay attention to that just cause it's funny. I don't invest in a lot of stuff, but like, yeah, I think it, if you show that, you know, the culture, it's, it's a, it's a, at least a positive signal to me that you're, you're a lot more likely to succeed because it, it just shows a level of understanding. And um, beyond that, I'm not a great researcher or anything. That's that's a, that's Zion's thing. I love him do all the actual research. So I, you know, I don't I don't really know how to tell if like a company is going to succeed or anything. But yes, if if if, if they know the right way to market themselves on Twitter, um, and it feels genuine, like it, it can, it's it's very easy to smell bullshit. So like if it feels like they're trying too hard, it's really easy to tell. Um, but yeah, the authenticity of it is 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 very obvious to me at least. And I think, I think subconsciously to everybody. So I think people gravitate towards that. And it's, it's people underrate how important that is to market a protocol is, is people not smelling bullshit and, and, and really understanding that like you're a part of the community too, like as a company, uh, like you're one of the homies and um, yeah. So that's, that, yeah, that's a big, that's a big signal for me as far as like, do I, do I think this company is going to succeed or I think they're corny or whatever it is. And, it's yeah, it seems the last like year or so companies are starting to catch on to that. And like, I've seen it more and more. Yeah. The last part that you bring up there really resonates with me in particular. And that's that, uh, the team and the, the company themselves are really part of that community. And not only are they part of the community, they're actually the real community leaders. Uh, so I think that's been something that's really positive to see from uh, from companies like Monad, where you have really engaged founders, engaged leaders that are are grateful for the support they're getting from community members, and they're also kind of leading the charge towards what those initiatives are and the attitudes that people have uh, uh, across the timeline. Yeah, I mean, pe people knew, you know, at my last job that I was, you know, I, I was doing the marketing and running the Twitter, so like they they knew that I was behind the account 
but it was, you know, so the account, but it was like, they were, they were naturally drawn to it because they knew it was like a trusted, you know, person that they were friends with on the timeline. So it was like way easier to engage and like, yeah, like hiring ambassadors or marketers or whatever that are a part of the community that like really get it. And e e even founders, if, if they're like, if you, if you're a, fa if you're someone that's a part of the community for a long time and, and, you know, you, you found something you've been respected, you're going to have a lot higher chance of success or at least trust in the beginning uh, for people to try your product out because you've 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 garnered that trust from the the community that you're marketing to um it's really difficult to come into crypto from i've seen so many companies try and do it and and like contact me and and you know be like oh you know how do we do this and i'm like well do you know it like like do you know anybody in the space like do you do you even know like the like like i guess like thought leaders in the space or whatever you want to call it and like if the answer is no it's like well good luck. I don't know. Like, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a little bit of a bubble that we live in and like, there's a way to, there's a way to success without that. But to me, without spending the time in the community, whether it's the founder or the people you hire to represent your brand, like is, is kind of a, ne a necessity to, to like, at least attempting to succeed, like even just to get attention enough to, for people to try your product. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's probably one of the more important things. And then you just hope your product's good and, and, and it's easy after that. Yeah, I think for obviously any successful product has to be a pretty decent product at the, the end of the day. And uh, particularly in crypto, that network mm -hmm. and knowing the the KOLs and also um, the the attitude amongst the, the general user and the, how things are going to be received is is really important. Beyond that, though, do you think there's a particular recipe yeah, re reading, for re reading the room? Like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was saying like reading the room is like really important. As I was going to say, is like like knowing what like how the, the timeline feels. But yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, honestly, I would love to kind of hear you unpack that more beyond like okay, so this is the sentiment on the the timeline. Where do you go from there? Yeah, like, I mean, it's hard to pinpoint exactly, but it's like, you don't, when people are feeling a certain type of way, you want to be able to show empathy as best you can. And the best way to do that is by being a part of that community and actually feeling those same feelings. So, um, you know, if people are, you know, when FTX happened and people lost a lot of money, like, it wasn't exactly the time to be like, you know, certain types of posting wasn't really, it wasn't the time for that. Like it was like people were actually getting hurt. And then there's times where like, you know, like self-deprecating humors, exactly what the timeline needs, the time bull posting, bear posting, whatever. It's hard to really, really like put into words, but it's just like, under, like reading the room and understanding like how everyone else is feeling on the timeline because you're a part of that timeline too. So you feel the same thing. And, um, and that's, that's, it's it's very easy if your 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 team is is a part of that community because they don't even have to really think about it. It's not they're not being fake. They're just actually expressing what everyone else is feeling too. So yeah, it, like I said, reading like reading the room, being a part of the room, being a part of the community um, is is I think really important because you know sending out tweets that people are just like, hey yo, like like now's not the time for this, whatever, whatever. Like that can be really off putting. Um, but it's, it's very easy if you're a part of the community to know what everyone's feeling. Yeah, hundred percent. Because at that point it's just second nature because you're, you're kind of one with the community and you're, you're understanding how everyone else is, is feeling what people are looking forward to. So that, that totally, uh, kind of makes sense to me. I think, uh, there's kind of a, a resurgence of of that as we see more and more people coming back to the timeline, more positive headlines on on crypto in general. Um, so, what tips would you give to someone who was just entering crypto today and was potentially hoping for a job down the road, or really just trying to get deeper into into crypto? Yeah, people ask me this a lot, um, and it, it's it's all I can speak to is, is my experience. Um, you know, there's, there's a few vertical verticals in, in, in a sense of like growing on, on crypto Twitter. And it's like, are you really smart and giving alpha that actually is alpha, which is kind of rare. And like, 
once you see it on the timeline, it's kind of not really alpha anymore. That's not always the case. There are, there are accounts you should like pay attention to. Um, I'm not that. Um, and then, you know, there's like the education side where people are being threat oars and like, you know, that networks, uh, as well. But for me, it, it was, it was, um, just being a part of the, the team and being a part of the community and sticking around. And like, I've noticed that, you know, the OGs in the space or the people that, that have been through the pain of bear markets multiple times, when they see that you're sticking around as a small account, um, and still staying engaged and not getting discouraged or like, uh, coping or like complaining I mean, complaining is fine. Like we all, we all are, you know, joke about like bear market stuff, but like, like truly still being a part of the community and like not losing, um, I guess not losing that, that drive to continue. Uh, I think that's huge. And, and you know, if, if I was to tell somebody, I guess that wanted to start from zero tomorrow, I, I would say do something similar. If, if they, depending on what their skill set was or whatever, if let's just say it was someone like me, who was just like, I want to be in crypto, but I don't really know what my path is. I would just say, be, you know, if you know you're funny or, you know, you can play like a funny, unique character, go for it. But the most simple answer is like, be yourself, but don't, I mean, being yourself can also mean being an asshole. So like, don't do that though. Um, so if you're an asshole, don't, don't be yourself, <laughs> but like, uh, you know, be, be very genuine and kind and, and, and empathetic with everything that's going on and be, be, um, lighthearted about everything. Don't take anything too seriously. Um, because I don't know, p emotional control, I think is the biggest advantage people can have in crypto for multiple reasons, whether you're a trader um, whether you're someone who's a networker, a BD guy, whatever, emotional control and the ability to, uh, look past like the short term, uh, emotions of like someone saying something you don't like, or someone doing something you don't like, or talking bad to you or talking bad to someone you, that you like, whatever, whatever it is, just stay out of that. Like, like just, just do, you know, do your best to not get tilted and just be a part of the community and, and, and be someone who shows up every day and who is nice. And even if you're not providing value, um, I've found that that's not really important. Like that's not people just we're, we're a very unique niche, weird space. We're all weird. Like it's like, so there's a, it's a natural instinct for people to gravitate towards one another who, who are, you know, share that sentiment. So yeah, I would say just start tweeting. Um, you know, every single day. Um, and if we want to get really technical, like as far as growing an account, um, you know, make most of your timeline, all of your tweets, don't retweet a whole bunch of stuff. Um, because people want, you know, when they go to your timeline, they want to see your stuff. They don't want to see any, you know, anyone else's. Um, so if you're, if you're trying to grow an account, yeah, keep it, keep it as pure as you can. If you do retweet something, maybe to support a friend, whatever, like maybe like unretweeted the next day or something, unless it's like really important or whatever. And, make your own judgment there, but like, um, and then replying to, it sounds stupid, but like, I literally reply guide my way to a, a career in crypto. And like, that's like, people make fun of reply guys, all the, you know, whatever, but it's like, it, it's funny. Somebody told me like, oh, uh, you know, you're, you're never going to make 10 figures as a reply guy. And I was like, well, me reply guy, you know, um, put me in positions to, uh, uh, to, to have a lot bigger opportunities than just a being a reply guy. So I, I kind of disagree with that sentiment. Um, it, you also have to be willing to learn, like be like, if you don't know it, if you don't have skills or if you don't like think you're useful in some way, find a way to teach yourself to be useful in, in some way. And like that you do not have to learn how to code. You don't have to learn how to do anything like hyper, hyper technical or, or difficult. Um, it, it can be as simple as just like, being a part of the community and being a community manager for a company. And then you naturally just learn uh, from there, from the inside, even if there's a lot of imposter syndrome, I had a lot of imposter syndrome at my first, my first job. Uh, Cause I, I knew nothing about anything and I still really don't. And, um, and that gives you an opportunity to actually learn and gain, gain skills. Well, maybe you're just a community manager of a discord server for, you know, a, a small, well, during a bull run, the, the, the salary is even those people aren't small, but, um, you know, maybe you're just a community manager for discord or like you're, you're helping out in telegrams or you're running a Twitter, um, 
whatever it is, I, I think you can get to that point just by replying to the the most important people in the space. And also at, like anyone who, who follows you and especially early on for as long as it's scalable, um, engaging with every single person that comments on your, your posts um, and replying to every DM and talking to everyone who's in, who, who goes out of their way to message you. Like if they go out of their way to send you a DM for as long as you can reply and give them a thoughtful response. Um, uh, I did that for a very, very long time. Unfortunately, the last few months it's been um, virtually impossible. So I've, I've, I've not really been able to do that. Um, but you can for a long time and, and you can do it long enough to, to, to establish yourself as a part, as a community member and people, people remember that, re <clears throat> remember that and they respect that. And if you're somebody that's that engaged with your own community, even if you only start off with, you know, a few hundred followers, you know, whatever your engagement's going to be higher, um, because they know that you're going to reply to them. Um, I mean, my account, I think my, uh, I've, done, I've run the numbers. I have like 24k, but I get I get the engagement of like a 50 to 60k account average in a CT because people know me as someone who will engage with the people, you know, people that comment on my stuff. So uh, there's a huge, huge um, value add in that to like really be engaging and like even if it's a pain in the ass some days. You know, for like doing it, like if people are going out of their way to like comment on your stuff and like your stuff and retweet your stuff or DM you and like you know whatever like just just reply to everybody for as long as you can and um and and also try to engage with the larger accounts like or the more important people or like uh people that can maybe give you an opportunity and and, and be genuine to them and, and also be willing to give value for free um for as long as you can um you know i i know people are you know a, a lot of people are in like not great positions i i wasn't i i you know i was not doing well financially for a long time, but I, I never asked anything from any like big players in the space that I've become good friends with. Um, just because I, you know, I, I, I chose just to continue doing my own thing. And then eventually an opportunity came that, that made up for all of it, you know, it, and it was, uh, you know, I, I've been talking about this on the timeline a lot lately, but the, 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 the difference between short-term and long-term thinking in crypto is, is huge and extremely underrated and 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 maybe you're like the best way to win if if winning to you means you know being a part of the community and getting a job so starting from zero is is really not that hard like uh, one good example of an account that's still growing right now is a uh, at brightone he's um a, he's a good friend of mine uh he's a, a guy that lives in uganda and i thought he was hilarious he had like 100 followers 200 followers or something and I found him under the Coinfessions tweets, just like uh, always, just always encouraging people to like, just like, it'll be okay. Just, just 125 X leverage your next trade. It'll, it'll, you'll make it back. But like, he's just really funny to do. He's, he's hilarious. And um, so I brought him into like my personal group chat. And um, since then he's, he's, you know, uh, continue to engage. You can, you know, it's, it's been like a long, a long journey too for him. Like it was for me, but like now he has a job in the space. He's like 2000 followers, something like that. People know who he is. He's, he, he's doing a lot better now. And like, for, you know, he, you know, he lives in a, in a place where like crypto money goes a long way. So it's like huge for him. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think it's really not that difficult. It's just a matter of consistency and emotional control and uh, being gra grateful for the people that follow you. Not, not ever like thinking of yourself as like some influencer that, that deserves anything. Um, Cause it's really the opposite. Like, like your, your followers are the reason you're even maybe relevant, whatever relevant means. So yeah, just keeping that mindset. I think if you, if you do that for six months, a year, you're going to start seeing opportunities come. Um, even if they're small, you know, take them and, uh, you know, take, take contract jobs, like, you know, maybe be a discord mod for a few months for, 500,000 bucks a month, whatever. And then that leads to like recommendations for this and you'll learn how to do this. Like, you know, I, I started out as just a reply guy at my first job. And then I ended up having like seven different roles and doing a bunch of other stuff that I had to learn on the go. And then since then I've learned even more like on a corporate level and like how to raise and like, how, you know, how to, how to kind of play the, like the talk to VCs and talk to angels. And like, you, you naturally, you just learn how to do stuff. And, um, it's really, it, it, 
I mean, maybe, maybe it's not as easy as I'm making it out to be, but it, it felt very natural to me um, as I was going through the process. And it never really felt like I was having to like figure it out. I was just like doing it. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just, like show up every day, be nice, reply to everybody. Uh, don't burn bridges. Uh, be very careful about who you like consider enemies and burn bridges with because it's just not really necessary. I mean, if someone's a scammer or whatever, you don't take, like engage with them or whatever, but just, you know, don't create enemies and just be, be a positive figure on the timeline because as, much, as cringy or whatever as people might call you sometimes like humans naturally gravitate towards people that are not negative people. Um, and that's worked out well for me. So yeah, that, that, that would be, that would be my, my advice, at least if you're somebody that's not, that's not already technical or has, has a skill that's, that's useful in the space. Yeah. I think that's, that's something that's, uh, you can't really take a shortcut around showing up every day, Mm -hmm. building a network and, and being genuine to people. And when you look around, I think it's, it's easy to have this common misconception that, oh, crypto is just this wild, wild west. They're all, there's all these online degenerates. They just show up, they crank up the leverage or, you know, they put a couple bucks in and then they hit a thousand X and it's this whole wild land that just doesn't make a lot of sense to people without zooming in and seeing that these people are engaging every day. There's a community around them that shares a, a certain mindset and a certain type of vibe. And then from there, people take their their own unique paths as you've taken yours and, and other friends have, have gone in different directions. But I think that's uh, something that almost can't be overstated, that it's it's really about simply showing up and engaging and finding mm -hmm. ways to contribute. And to me, Monad has been been really a front leader this past year at creating an environment where people can do that. There's been so many different artists and musicians and all sorts of types of content creators just coming in and building their own personal brand, their own niche without looking for, for anything in particular. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, particularly pumped to hear you share that philosophy as well. Yeah. And real quick props to your, um, y'all's, uh, your, your, your telegram channel is like, so like really unique and surprisingly engaging. Um, I, I jump in there as much. I hate telegram cause it's just, like 500 unread messages. So I just get anxiety when I open the app, but I try to get in, into the telegram as much as I can, but you guys have like did something, you've done something, at least from my per perspective, unique in, in, in with that itself. Um, and then of course the timeline matters too, but like you guys have done a really good job of creating a community that like rides for you um, in a genuine way. Um, and in a fun way, like I've, every time I jump in your telegram, it's just like positive fun, you know, no one's really being serious. And like, uh, you know, I've jumped in there and like, uh, shield like spaces I'm doing and no one gets mad at me or anything. I, I guess, I mean, it's cause I'm like friends with most people in there, but like, you know, it, it's all just been good vibes. And like, uh, I think you guys have definitely, definitely done a good job of that. Um, uh, just, and, and like I said, you hire the right people, you hire people that people like on the timeline, uh, to, to, you know, represent your brand, which is huge. Um, and then the founders understanding that that's the route you need to take is also extremely important because I've, I've advised for companies that just didn't get it. And they're really, really hard nosed about, no, we need to be hyper professional and every tweet should be a, an update about our, our whatever. And I'm like, all right, like, you know, they just didn't take the advice and, you know, it just doesn't, you know, whatever. But um, I think you guys are killing it, at least from my perspective. And I'm not just saying that because you sent me a hat. Um, I actually do think you guys are, are doing, doing great. Um, so, yeah, it's been cool to see. Yeah, certainly, certainly exciting to follow along and, and watch the growth and, and different outlets that the community's gotten creative on and really fun to, to participate in as well. I joined personally earlier in the year, uh, was probably a, around when you hopped in the, the Telegram chat as well. And it's, that's yeah. what it's been. It's been just a lot of, of really good vibes, supportive of anyone who's building, regardless of of where they're building, whether it's EVM or, or somewhere else even. Uh, and, and I think that's really important too, to have that open collaborative mindset because we're, we're in a really yeah. small space and we talk about being in this, this echo chamber 
but crypto really hasn't scaled obviously to the masses yet. So the more we can lift each other up as as we're building, uh, the more positive yeah. we're going to have an outcome. Uh, that's another thing I, I hammer in hard when I'm, when I'm on spaces and people want to ask me questions um, is, you know, I, I see this a lot in the like crypto is kind of two different things now. There's like the NFT community and then there's what I call crypto. Um, you know, that's just my personal view on it. But uh, specifically the NFT community, and, and, and there's there is something to learn for this from this for crypto companies like actual like protocols um, is there's just a, a lot of like us me versus you mentality. And I try really, really, really hard to drive home. Like, guys, we are it's it's as corny as it sounds. It, it literally is like us against the world right now. And um, we we are all on the same team. We all want the same thing. Um, yeah, it's PVP and that's fair. And you're going to, you know, you, you get into the arena and like whatever, whatever. But like at the end of the day, um, there's no reason to, to like separate yourself into tribes and like fight each other. There's, we, you can't, we can't eat or eat, eat each other alive yet because we haven't even, we haven't even like won. I guess for lack of a better word, like, so it's just like, we're all on the exact same team, whether you're already, whether you've already made it and all your money or you're still trying to like, it's just a better strategy to keep the mindset that like, okay, even if this person is doing something that's even, even a competitor to me in some sense, it's like, you, you don't need to have really necessarily bad blood between you each other. Like it's just, you know, GG, good game. Let's see who wins. Like, we're friends, we're homies. Like, you know, I've come across that a lot where it's like, I've had friends that have worked for competitors of a certain companies that I've worked for. And it's like, there's no beef or any, it's just stupid. It's like, we're all just trying to make a living. And, um, and we're trying to figure, like, we're all figuring it out together. We're figuring out what's going to work and what's not. Most things won't. And like, uh, there's just no reason to not play on the same team together and, and just like hope I'd be happy for each other, like other people winning in the space. Cause at the end of the day, you know, rising tide lifts all ships or whatever. Um, and that's true. You know, of course not everyone's going to make it, but like successful things in crypto is going to give crypto itself a good name, uh, a better name. And uh, so you should be happy for that. Like you should be happy when you see a protocol uh, maybe breaking through a little bit into the mainstream or, or like finding some success here and onboarding people and like whatever, even if it's not yours because that trickles down and uh it's just important to keep that like we're on the same team mindset for a long time because it's, it's you know it's not we got a we got a long way to go you know as as a, as a space as far as like the real world's concerned and I, I don't even know what mass adoption looks like or what if it means anything but uh we're we're just too small to be fighting against each other for over stupid stuff so yeah the, the community like like genuineness of the community like like you, I mean, <clears throat> I'll just be candid. Like, you know, I was at IDEX and you guys like were showing me love and I was in your telegram just goofing off and, you know, it, there's, it's just love and fun and goofing around. You know what I mean? Like, it, it doesn't really matter if like someone looks at somebody as like maybe a potential competitor or whatever, just, just be nice to people and like wish them the best, but work your ass off and try and be better. And, uh, and, and that's, that's kind of the recipe to success. I think for the, the, the industry as a whole, I just, I think we have, I do see, think we have a serious problem, especially in the bear market right now of like, uh, in, in fighting and like, uh, tribalism and like, um, I don't know. I, I just think it's a, ba a bad idea for the space. Uh, but it's a bear market. People are emotional. I get it. Uh, I would just, my advice would be try your best to relax and go meditate <laughs> certainly certainly couldn't agree with you more there we're we're all on the the same team here pushing for some decentralization and uh you know some more adoption of of blockchains but certainly looking back at the past year year and a half two years now it's a pretty exciting time that we're in now what are you looking forward to over the next one or two years on the on the on like the like the DEX and the protocol, like DeFi side of things, like that's all good. And like, there's improvements being made there and like actual use cases maybe popping up around there. And like, I think, I think DEX is specifically when it comes to like the technical side of crypto um, are going to be 
uh, extremely important to see how much success can be found there and, and improvements around that. Um, because for obvious reasons that, that we all are aligned with and, uh, you know, but that's also very, that's also a very small, um, niche and like uh, user base. So I think also beyond that is, uh, you know, if we, if we truly believe crypto is a useful tool in multiple facets across, you know, society, um, I think it's going to have to be something like, uh, like social, um, you know, like social media platforms or, or apps or protocols or something that like brings people in because the app is or the protocol of the platform, whatever you're going to call it is actually fun. Um, and, and they're not coming into it because it's crypto. They're coming into it because it's actually fun or in, enjoying, enjoy, like they're finding enjoyment from it. Um, and I think that's a big thing. I think, yeah, uh, finding a way to make this appealing to the everyday person is going to take a social aspect to it. Um, so that could that could mean a social media platform or pl social media app or whatever. Um, and then some fairly I'm fairly bullish on that. There's a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of players in the game, obviously, um, you know, I, I won't go down the list or anything, but like there there are people that are, you know, trying their best and whatever that to, to attract the mainstream. And, you know, I have my opinions on, on certain <clears throat> strategies that I just don't think will work out long-term. Um, Cause it's just very hard to bring people into a new social um, ecosystem uh, without being extremely unique and uh, you know, novel and like really, really fun. Um, but I do, but I, I, I am bullish on that happening uh, next bull run. And then I, I hear a lot about gaming um, aspect to it because obviously that's another social uh, thing. And um, obviously, you know, most people in the world play video games. Um, I have, I have kind of not, not really a bearish sentiment towards it, but um, with the exception of a couple like Posi T and Oh Baby games and like, people, there's a few like, people that are there's a few other game and like like apps on the app store that are crypto re integrated or whatever um that are that are good and uh and i think there'll be a few that find success but i'm a little bit more bearish on the video game side of things because so far everything we've seen hasn't really been about it being a fun game it's been more about like pay pay to like you're, pl you're playing this game to make money which isn't sustainable in any sense long term um, so I think, and also a big part of that is it's very hard to make a fun game. Um, so people that are crypto native that have never built a game in their life, you know, until the last few years, I think are going to find it really hard to build a fun game because the, you know, you have studios like Activision and, and Bethesda and whatever, uh, that have been in Nintendo that have been in the game for 10, 20, 30 years, and they still put out shitty games every usually i mean it's usually like a 50 50 hit rate with games that come out of studios and and these are people that are huge 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 multi-million dollar billion dollar companies and they've been doing it forever and they still struggle to make really fun games so i i think it's going to take in that sense fortunately or unfortunately i think it's going to take those companies finding value in the technology that we build we not me but you guys whoever um that, that crypto builds finding utility there and adopting it themselves um, and, and integrating it because I, I just, I, you know, of course I can be wrong. Of course someone can, can hit a home run and make a really fun game. But I think I'm a little bit more bearish on like, Oh, someone's going to make a kick-ass video game. And that's crypto natives, like all built by crypto people and blah. blah. I, and like, it's just tough, man. Like it's, it's just hard to make, it's hard to make a game that people want to play because there's just too many options. And, uh, like I said, even the people that are really good at it are they they don't always have a good hit rate with games. Um, so, but I do think there's a chance there. I, like there, there's there's I've been my opinion has been swayed a little bit o o over the last couple of months um, just from certain things I've seen. But uh, yeah, so that, a little bit of a long answer. But yeah, on on the deck side of things, very excited there as far as like the technical side of crypto that like people that care about the financial side that understand it is huge 
Um, I just think that's a really small niche. Um, but I think if, we, if we're talking mass adoption, um, which it could be a long way, I don't know. But I think the way that's going to happen one day is is through social and it's like what what do people what do people do spend their time doing? They 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 watch TikToks, they tweet, they spend time on Instagram, uh, they watch Netflix. Like, what do people spend their time doing? They they go to shows, they like music. Um, so we got to figure that out. Like, is there a use case for this? Like, I'm very, I'm from the music industry. I'm extremely bullish on, on crypto, um, completely disrupting the music industry and not through NFTs. I'm, I'm very, very open about being bearish on like music NFTs as like the thing that does it. Like there's very good, like Image and Heap has like an Image and Heap that I think, um, Rolling Loud did, did a really good job. Like, uh. Um, with their loud punks NFTs, where you get access to all the, all their festivals VIP forever if you own one. Like that's the most utility I've seen of NFT have yet, to be completely honest. Um, and like, good job to them for figuring that out. Uh, but other than that, I don't think I don't think NFTs are going to be the answer for for the music side of things. I'm I'm more looking at like uh, <clears throat> protocols that can figure out a way to make sure artists are paid um, quickly, um, efficiently. Um, the 70% of the money in music never makes its way back to the artist um, for multiple reasons. Uh, so I think crypto can, I, since 2017, I've thought crypto could be an, an answer to that. I just haven't until now really understood how to maybe approach that. I'm just now kind of getting some thought, giving some thoughts around it and, and, and putting some thought into helping some somebody with it. Um, but yeah, so I think it's, it's really zooming out and looking at like, what does everyone else care about in the world? Um, and do we actually have something in the technology that can um, improve that experience for them? Uh, and I think the answer is yes for most things, because I, I like <clears throat> I think crypto can improve almost any vertical in the world um, uh, if you if you really know what you're what you're looking at. Uh, so it's just about figuring it out and uh, and figuring it out how to how to make make it attractive to the everyday person. I think the NFT bull run did it. And then also didn't do it. Um, they did it in a sense of like short term hype, uh, mania, whatever. And um, I, I go back and forth on if the NFT bull run was good or bad for the space, to be honest, because yes, it brought a lot of new people in that were interested, but um, a lot of these new people, like, you know, they made a lot of money really quick by accidentally buying a picture of a monkey and like then didn't, you know, got, you know, got egos about it and like, don't understand what a bear market looks like. And they're like, I get, in, I get into Twitter's faces and I'm like, I hear people analyzing like, oh, why is this collection going down? Is it these traits and this and that? And I'm like, no, it's because it's a bear market. Like there's no, there's no analyzing to be done. It's just, we're in a bear market. Uh, like sure. Certain things pop off here and there. That's always how it's going to be. Like Spro's had its run and like certain things pop off, but from a macro standpoint, like there is no analyzing it we're just it's a it's a bear market so just chill and also realize that most of what you own is is not going to come back and um in my opinion and um yeah so I, so I say it's a negative because there was a lot of grifting that happened within that space and uh i've talked to a lot of mainstream people whether it be like music ex executives or wh whoever and they're like extremely put off from crypto because of the nft bull run I th uh, so I think it helped us in some ways and it really hurt us in some ways because people, very powerful people that I've talked to, um, powerful in a sense of like they manage a lot of artists or they, they just have influence in some way. Um, they are extremely put off from the entire space because of how grifty the NFT bull, bull run went. So I think we'd be very careful. Um, unfortunately, I think. I think next cycle, like I think NFTs will improve a bit, um, but I, I have a feeling we're going to see NFT grift bull run 2.0 again, um, even bigger this time. Um, you know, that's a, that's a little negative sentiment, I guess, but it's just how, how I feel. Uh, but we got to figure that out. Like we got to, you know, it, it'll, it'll, it'll work itself out. We, we have to remember that like none of us have any idea what we're doing. We're, we, we are in the wild west. We have no clue what's actually going to work and what's not. And 
we're looking at this in a very short time span when we really should be looking at this in like, you know, to be honest, like a 50 year time span. Like, okay, like we're in the fucking trenches right now. Nobody's an expert at anything um, at any level. Like we don't even, we don't know if Ethereum's going to work. We don't know if Solana is going to work. We don't know if Bitcoin's ever going to be considered useful. I, you know, I, I think, you know, I have strong uh, conviction on certain things, but like at the end of the day, no one actually knows. So I think we need to be able to admit that um, and do our best to avoid bad actors in the space again. Like, you know, like the Logan Pauls or like big YouTubers grifting NFTs that that, that really hurt the space that, that really did. Um, and I know that just from personal conversations with people who who could have brought value to the space if they didn't if had that if they hadn't have had that experience. So um i am excited about all that stuff i just hope that we can do it a little bit better this time which is really the goal you, just, you don't have you don't have to win like we don't have to have the super cycle yet whatever there never has to be one we just need to keep getting better and um eventually uh i i do think crypto will will find its place in the world um in the right way uh that actually benefits people in mass so uh again another long answer but I guess I have a lot yeah, of thoughts about that. So, I think you hit it exactly on the head. There's certainly a lot of unknowns, um, a, a lot going on in a short time frame, and a ton of work to be done. But there's a lot to be excited for here, and you outlined a couple areas I think there that are truly and truly exciting, truly could help a lot of people across the world. And what better place to be than the forefront of all of this? Um, Pancakes, bro. Yeah. I really appreciate you taking the time to hop on today. Before we wrap up here, want to give you a quick chance to run any shout outs that you'd like. Oh, okay. Um, who do I want to shout out? I want to shout out at Brightone. I love you. Um, and I'm going to shout out. I'm going to shout out KNV and Grinding Poet for being the homies. And Grug for keeping me around. And Kobe, you motherfucker, you're in Argentina right now. We better hang out. And that's all I got. He's a homie. But um yeah. I have no I have no shills. So just just saying hi to some friends. Um Love that's it. all I got. Love it. Well, what better than that? Cool, man. It's well, I, it's great to have you here. Really appreciate you hopping on. Yeah. No, man, thanks. I I, I I enjoy doing these things. I, I wish I had time to run, like run my own podcast. So I'm always happy to come on. Thanks for reaching out. And like, like I said, it would, you know, if, if, if I was going to do a podcast with any team, it, you know, it, you guys are definitely very high on the list. I, I love y'all's team. So uh, keep killing it. Um, I wish you the best. And like, I, I really think you guys have a bright future in the bull run and uh, thanks for the hat. And if there's more hats in the future, I will, I will require them. <laughs> so uh thank you uh thank, thanks for your time and i'm around if you guys need anything else so awesome well i think uh more mon hats can and should definitely be arranged looking forward to catching yes. up soon all right <laughs> all right brother thank you so much